Hi, everyone. Welcome. Give everyone a moment to filter in. Yes, Scotty, you can't miss this week because there's going to be a test. And have you studied? I don't know. You, you need to study. All right. Well, I hope everyone is doing pretty well. So while I was watching Fox and stream, I was watching my new eels in my new tank. They're so cute. They have these like little pointy noses and they can kind of like flex their noses a little bit like that. And they kind of like poke at things and they like root around for food and like they'll vacuum up a flake of food. They're so cute. I'm very glad I bought them. So Muppet has learning pants on. Well done, Muppet. It's very important to wear the right pants. I'm wearing teal lounge pants because I'm going to bed after this. All right. Well, so today's topic is sex determination. So pretty exciting stuff, right? I mean, anytime you put sex in the title, so salacious, so fun. And that's what we're talking about today. So let's get started. Share my screen with two monitor. Share screen. All right. Okay, so you are all very familiar with pretty much just one kind of sex determination. So sex determination is what controls making a male or a female. And it's different in different organisms. So, um, and for, for discussion's sake, we will define the male as the organism that makes the swimming gametes or the sperm and the female makes the larger gamete that is stationary that doesn't go anywhere and in mammals you know obviously the female would be the one that provides more physical investment into the offspring so it gives birth um reptiles and birds lay the eggs for females so that's a female but how you make that works different in so many different organisms. It works different in different plants, different animals. And um, it's, it's very interesting how that is. So in humans, as I'm sure you know, males are XY and females are XX. And on the left here, this is a karyotype of male chromosomes. So a karyotype is just a picture of chromosomes taken when they're at their most condensed and then they're usually stained so you can see some banding but on the left this is an x chromosome and it's a pretty decent sized chromosome it has a lot of genes on it and genes that are important throughout the body not just for one sex um but the y chromosome is pretty tiny and it doesn't have many genes on it at all and most of the genes that are there are just um, male sex determination genes. So genes for making male gonads. Um, and there's one gene that's really, really important in particular, and that's called the SRY gene. And that gene, presence of it, will start a whole cascade of other genes that will ultimately make more testosterone and more anti-malarian hormone. And what that does is that causes male gonads to form instead of female gonads. And that's how you get a male. So in humans, sex is determined by presence of the Y. So you can have a viable human who will live, who has something called Turner's syndrome, that's just an X. So just one X and no other chromosome, and that individual will be female, sterile, but a female. Now, if you have an XXY individual, that individual so has a presence of a Y chromosome. That individual is a male and has Klinefelter syndrome. That individual is sterile, but is mostly okay. You know, might not even know unless unless you went to have children that you had 
Klinefelter syndrome. And then if you can also have males that are XYY and they don't really have anything wrong with them, they might be sterile, but uh, you really wouldn't be able to tell at all. So presence of the Y is what determines um, humans becoming male. But this is not how it works in other organisms. Other organisms do it really differently. So in flies, there are X and Y chromosomes too. And females are usually XX. And males are XY, but it's not presence of the Y chromosome. It's that makes a male. Um, it's sex in flies. So this is Drosophila melanogaster. This is the basic fruit fly. Every geneticist's favorite pet. Um, and it's the number of X chromosomes that determine if a fly is female or not. So if you have an XXY fly, you have two X chromosomes and that fly will be a female and not a male. So it's the opposite of male or of humans. So even though they have XX or X and Y chromosomes, just like we do, Sex is determined really differently. So they use a counting system. So somehow, and actually this has been worked out really well, it's kind of complicated, but female fly cells can count. So pretty cool. So, but there's even more complicated systems than that. So this is a platypus. So platypus are not platypuses, platypi. Who can, who knows what the plural is? I don't know. But they have X and Y chromosomes, but they have five of each, uh, which is just wild. So if you have 10 X chromosomes, so X, 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 it's a female. And if you have five X's and five Y's, it's a male platypus. So this is a platypus karyotype right here. So chromosomes one through 21, these are autosomes. So they're not sex chromosomes. And then all the sex chromosomes are shown below. And this is a male. So it has an X1 and Y1 and X2 and Y2 and X3 and Y3 and so on and so forth. So it's a pretty complicated system. And and uh, I wonder how it always segregates that way. I don't know any more about that. But how is it you, you can only get those two combinations? I would think that there would be other combinations you could get, but uh, apparently there is something in pairing that makes it, uh, those are the only two options. So yeah, that's a platypus. So they're five times sexier than you with a little heart between them just for Valentine's day. Aww. Make some platypus babies and platypuses lay eggs. So cool. All right, so this is an example. This is a fish you guys probably know, and there are probably people in the chat who know a hundred times more about this fish than I do. This is a platy, so from the genus Zephophorus. I don't really know a whole lot about platies. I have never kept a platy, believe it or not. But platies have three sex chromosomes. They have a W and an X and a Y. And um, if there's the combination WY, WX, or XX, it's a female. But if you have a YY or an XY, it's a male. So, you know, it's, it's a weird combination there. And there's also some developmental cues for whether um, a fish will be f a fertile male or not. Um, and you guys probably know way more about that than I do because I know a lot of you are platy platy breeders, platy keepers, platy people. So if you want to look beyond the XY system, so chickens and I think most birds use something called the ZW system. So um, the sex that has different sex chromosomes is known as the heterogametic sex. So in humans, males are the heterogametic sex because they are XY. And the homogametic sex means they have the same sex chromosome. So females would be the homogametic sex. But it is the opposite in chickens. So in chickens, if you have two of the same sex chromosome, if you're ZZ, that means you are a boy chicken. And if you're ZW, you're a girl chicken. So 
Um, otherwise, sex determination works pretty much the same. It's just that which sex is the heterogamenic one is switched. So, pretty cool. So, then we have something called the XO deter sex determination system. And there are a lot of um, insects that do this. So, X is the sex chromosome and O means there's no chromosome there at all. And that's because the males are haploid. And if you remember from last week, haploid means it has only one set of chromosomes. The females are diploid. They have two sets. So kind of a different thing. So in grasshoppers and other ornithopteran insects, so like crickets, um, let's see, what else would there be? Locusts, katydids, cicadas. These are all ornithopteran XX. The females are XX and, um, they can make either XX males or if there's something called non disjunction, they can also make X males, um, that are un, um, if they're not fertilized, they can also make X males and males can only make, they can also make females and males. If, um, so that's how, how it works in them. Um, and, uh, oh, fat kitty. No. He had to come say hi. So all the other insects do this too. So, um, hymenopteran insects. So those are social insects like ants and bees. They have an exosystem too. So the males are XO. They're unfertilized. Um, and the females, the worker bees, are XX. And the cool thing is, is that um, the queen is the only one making babies. And she has the ability to store her sperm and control whether she's going to have female or male um, offspring based on what the colony needs. So if the colony needs more males, she will lay eggs that are unfertilized. And if the colony needs more worker bees, she will be, um, lay eggs that are fertilized. So yeah, and how you get a queen, by the way, is that um, the worker bees will start feeding one larva, they'll treat it specially, and they'll feed it something called royal jelly, which, um, allows a developmental cascade to happen that turns it into a queen. So, but genetically a queen and a worker bee are the same. They're both XX. So that's how, and not every insect does it this way. I mean, some insects are determined, have sex determined another way. So it's, it's very different in insects. Um, this is a, this is an organism I've done a lot of work on. This is C. elegans. This is a nematode. Um, and the reason I've done a lot of work on this is this is one of those model systems that geneticists like to work with. And I've spent a couple years of my life looking at this little worm called Cenorhabditis elegans or just C. elegans. And most C. elegans worms are hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites are XX. So they contain both male parts and female parts and they fertilize themselves. So hermaphrodites don't mate with other hermaphrodites. Some hermaphrodites do that in other species, but in this worm, they just mate with themselves. So there's um, an ovary right here. This is a gonad and there's a spermatheca and the oocyte as it's mature, maturing will pass through the spermatheca and then the eggs will develop here. This is the vulva and they spit out there. So that's most of what you see in C. elegans are these hermaphrodites. However, we'll come back. However, every now and again, um, there will be occasional XO males. So these have only one copy of a sex chromosome and they don't have any female parts. They just make sperm. And then they can mate with a hermaphrodite and then 50% of the offspring will be hermaphrodites and 50% will be males. So that's how sex determination works in C. elegans. And I imagine lots and lots of other worms too.
So I've watched lots of Worms Mate. Just a lot of them. Just so much time watching them mate. So there don't have to be chromosomal or genetic cues for sex. There are also developmental cues. And this is something that a lot of reptiles do. So sex is determined in many reptiles, perhaps not all. I don't know everything about reptiles, but by the temperature of the embryo. And those tend to fall into two patterns. Um, pattern one is like the olive Ridley turtle. This is a sea turtle right here. And at higher temperatures, you tend to get a lot of males. And at lower temperatures, um, you get, or sorry, I've got that opposite. Higher temperatures, you get less males. And at lower temperatures, you get more males. I think I got that right. So that's pattern one. And then pattern two, this is what American alligators do. And I think other crocodile, crocodilians too. So relatives of this little guy right here. And males kind of form it, most of them at like the even Steven kind of gravy, gradients. So the average temperatures. And then if it's a little too cold or a little too hot on either end, that's where you get females forming. And the interesting thing about this is from a conservation standpoint, um, you know, our climate is getting hotter every year. It's getting warmer and warmer. And it only takes a couple of degrees of difference to throw off sex ratios. And so, um, you know, some in some animals, so um, at higher temperatures, now you're getting too many females because, or I mean, you're, you're getting too many females because you're not getting these lower temperature males forming in alligators. And if we have higher temperatures, well, with the olive ridley turtle, we are getting too many females. So, um, you know, this is this is a real issue. And, um, you know, I don't, the sea turtles really can't change how they build their nests. They they don't know how else to do it. So it's it's a real conservation issue. And a lot of these animals are endangered. So. Cool thing about this, this olive ridley turtle right here, I swam with these in the Bahamas and it was just magical. I just walked right outside my hotel and I have my snorkeling gear on and I followed a turtle around for about 45 minutes swimming with him and watching him graze and, or her, I really don't know. Um, but it was just amazing. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done. So the last thing are plants. So plants also... Um, form sex organs due to developmental cues. So plants don't have any sex chromosomes um, and and they have their sexes in, in different ways. So this is what's called a perfect flower on the left. That means it has both male parts and female parts. So the male parts are the anthers. These are also called the stamens. And the female part is either called the pistil or the carpal. The term is acceptable. An example of this would be the tulip right here. So you can see this black part. This is the anther. And this yellow part in the center, this is the stamen. So that's a perfect flower. It has all the parts. But there are other variations of this. So there's something called monoecious plants. This is a plant that has both male flowers and female flowers on the same plants, but they're different. So it has separate flowers, but on the same plant. And the famous example of this is corn. So I'm from Iowa. I've seen a lot of corn in my life. And the male flowers are the tassel. And the female flowers are the ear. So this um, corn is wind pollinated. So the pollen blows around and it pollinates the flowers on the ear. The silks are the um, the style, or the which is part of the um, pistil, and that fertilizes it and forms the corn kernels. So, but so that's one example of that. Another monoecious plant that you're probably that you might be familiar with are begonias. Next time you're growing begonias, notice that there are two different kinds of flowers. They look different. They're male flowers and female flowers, and they have. The petals look a little bit different and they're on the same plant. So just pay attention to your begonias this summer when you're growing them. Maybe you're not growing begonias, but maybe you should. They're really pretty. 
So you can also have dioecious plants. This is where you have separate female plants and separate male plants. And an example of that would be holly. So you can get this uh, one on top is a male holly plant. And on the bottom is a female holly plant. Another example of that would be ginkgos. Um, if you've ever seen ginkgo trees, um, they're very cool. They're very pretty. The leaves are beautiful. They have a beautiful, graceful shape. Just be careful if you ever plant one, you want to plant a male ginkgo because the female ones form the ginkgo seeds and they're stinky. Um, they form these little balls and they drop off in the fall and they smell like barf. So they're very stinky. So make sure you plant a male ginkgo at the University of Iowa. Um, think it was China gave them a gift of ginkgo trees like in the 40s maybe even earlier than that and so they're like there's one street that's lined with ginkgos and there are I don't know 15 or 20 of them and a whole bunch of them maybe all of them are females and so every fall there's like it smells like barf as you're walking down that street because they're just all these ginkgo balls so yeah and apparently you can eat ginkgo seeds once they're dry Maybe, I don't know, I've never eaten one. I'm assuming they don't smell like barf anymore, but otherwise they're pretty gross. So in conclusion, sex is determined by lots and lots of different things. There's sometimes environmental cues. So cichlids can switch sexes, which is kind of crazy. Some of you guys probably know way more about that than I do because you're cichlid keepers. Um, it can be different genetic cues. There's different chromosomal cues for it. Um, but it's very different than just humans, the XY system. There's even different variations on the XY system. So let's go see what you guys are chatting about. Not sure. Stop screen. There we go. All right. Let's see what people are chatting about. Scotty missed last week. I hope you've studied for your quiz, Scotty. There's going to be a quiz. You don't want to fail. All right. We're supposed to have pants on. I mean, you're not live streaming, Scotty. So mm -hmm. up to you. Geek Boy says this is the only subject I study it all the time in school. And that's why we're talking about it. Like the more, when I used to teach non-majors um, biology, which students are typically not very interested in doing it. I mean, they're doing it because they have to, not because they want to. It's a, it's a gen ed requirement. And it was at 8 a.m., which is the worst time to teach. It's awful. I did like 50% of the semester was about the evolution of sex because, I don't know, you just got to make it interesting somehow. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Dragon Lair, I'm so glad to see that you're here. How are you doing? How are you feeling? You're in all of our thoughts. And thank you for visiting our stream. And I, I hope you start feeling better. All right, so many people saying hello. Bunny Viper says females are double X rated. Well then. Well then. I mean, I guess it depends, right? I mean, if you're a female platypus, you're like a 10 X rated. Okay, Dragon Lair says his abdomen is sore and he's got big incisions all over. Oh my goodness, I'm sure you do. Well, just keep resting, keep taking care of yourself, keep listening to your doctors. I hope you start to get better. So it's getting known as don't girls not have periods with that. Yes. So Turner syndrome, um, the they're female. They do not have, um, uh, they, they're sterile and they, they don't undergo a puberty. So they, they have underdeveloped in lots of ways. And yes, they don't have a period. 
but they are female. So they don't have testes or penises. Those damn monotremes. Eric, how are you feeling? Please stop getting sick. Tell your children to quit murdering you. I mean, just stop it, children. All right, Big Cat says, I can't believe I didn't have to pay tuition for this goddamn... What was after that? Well, you're going to get a bill in the mail. So, I mean, they just haven't charged you yet. I'm probably... I'm still paying for my education. I will never be done with that. Ever. <laughs> Nathan Hovey says, what do you call a platypus that loves to give kisses? I have a feeling we'll find out in the next comment. Sketty Nona says, I know an Australian YouTube channel, Perpetual Platypus. like her content. I would. I think they're very cute. You can kind of tickle them. And here's a, this is a very fun, fun fact about the platypi. Um, the males actually are venomous. So there are no mammals and no other monotremes that have, that make a, a toxin, but they have a little spur on their back legs and they're, they're venomous. Like snakes are, I don't know how venomous. I mean, everything in Australia will kill you, right? That's, I mean, Mark can tell us more about that. Australian animals are trying to kill us. <sighs> How in the world does Kelly have less than 50,000 subs? Well, I make zero content. That's why. If I started making shorts, it would probably help. But I just don't care. So I'm very grateful for everyone who comes to chat. Bunny Viper says, temperature often determines up reptile sex. Alligators, for example. Yes, it does. It's a, a crazy system. Dragon Lawyer, ugh, can't talk. Dragon Lair says, got to grow a big one gonopodium to be a male platy. Yeah, they do. And I don't, I know that some of that is hormonal cures, uh, cues, but, and dominance cues from, that are part of hormonal cues, but I don't know what genetically they would be. I don't know a lot about platies to tell you the truth. I, fun fact about me, I don't ever keep live bears. I've never had a platy. I think we had mollies as a kid once, but I've never had a guppy even. I've never had an endler. I don't see that as changing. I mean, Stephen has threatened me many times with the live bear mosh pit, but I've resisted. Okay, Coral Works asked, how did the clownfish and clams and things change from one to another sex? And, and that's another one of those developmental cues. So there are hormonal signals, and I don't know a lot about that, but it's not, so it wouldn't be genetically determined like, like humans are or Drosophila, you know, flies or anything like that. It would be developmental cues, and it's, probably, it's certainly a hormone pathway, but I don't know a lot about it. I do know that the um, sex can change in a lot of fish, including clownfish. Um, clams, some of those are hermaphroditic, I believe. A lot of gastropods are hermaphroditic. We'll probably have to have a snail episode one of these days. Because there's someone in chat who will make her very happy. I'm not going to say who. But there is someone in chat who would make her very happy. <laughs> it's kind of dirty, so here you go. It's a lick a lot of puss. Well, then. Bunny Viper says, I'm a born teacher. You have a brilliant, organized mind, and you are able to teach in such a manner that others can understand. Thank you. Well, thank you. You know, I just taught a lot of years, and you do get, you know, anything you have to do, a lot of times you do get better at. And I promise you, if you had to do it every day, you would do, you would get better at it too. It's your spirit animal. Nathan, be good or I will sick my mods on you and they will put you in timeout. No more. No more. <laughs> Dragon Lair dated a hermaphrodite once. 
Well then, so there actually are human hermaphrodites. There are intersex individuals. This is a, a real thing. And some of that is because, um, so for instance, um, there are mutations in um, testosterone receptors. So an individual will be born genetically male. However, they um, aren't as sensitive to testosterone. So they don't develop, they have um, testes that never descend. They never grow a penis. They look just like women and they grow up feeling like women. Um, so their gender would be female, but they are intersex individuals. So, and there's lots of ways to be an intersex individual and there are many of them. All right. Geek Boris and Boy says, not the kind of porn I would have thought Kelly spent so much time watching. Yeah, you know, I spent the most of my my career as a scientist um, sitting in a dark room for like eight hours at a time, counting little blue dots. So counting nuclei. And I think it would have been better for my brain to watch reality TV. Even it was it was hard. It's the reason I need glasses. So I, I have to have glasses to drive. And it's because microscope work trashed my eyes. So yeah. Oh, Nathan. No more jokes like that. Or my mods, my mods will act. They are vengeful. Like a Viking goddess. I don't think I look like a Viking. I I I don't. I'm not blonde haired and blue eyed. I guess I am tall, but I don't I don't think I really look like a Viking. Um dum. Bunny Viper agrees. They smell like barf. Yeah, those ginkgos, they stink. They smell awful. So at the University of Iowa, they have to clean them up right away in the fall because they smell so bad. And otherwise, like students will just start stomping through them on the way to class because it's on one of those streets that has lots and lots of uh Lots of uh, buildings on it that students have to go to class in. So there's a lot of foot traffic and it just smells really bad. It's getting known as says it's vomit mixed with cat urine and death. It is pretty bad. And they, they make a lot of seeds. So the ground will just be covered in them. So if you want to get a ginkgo and they're beautiful, beautiful plants, you can look up their leaves. You've all seen them before. They're very beautiful. Just make sure you get a male. You don't want a female. Barf sounds pretty scientific. I'm here to give you the real good learning, Matt. And by the way, speaking of Matt, fishfam.link. So I'm a supporter of fishfam.link. And one thing that Matt has done with fishfam.link is that he is beta testing an iOS app for fishfam.link. And I've been beta testing it and it works really, really well. And if you are an iPhone user, and I can't imagine why you wouldn't be, um, you too can beta test it if you are a supporter of the Patreon of fishfam.link. So for just five bucks a month, you can support this website that supports our whole hobby and our whole community. And like, do you even need Netflix? You don't. Netflix, it's a waste of your time and money. You know it's not as good as it used to be. So quit Netflix, give five bucks a month to fishfam.link, and then the other 10 bucks a month, you can buy yourself cake with it. So you can enjoy an iOS app for fishfam.link and cake. And that sounds like a good bargain to me. Oh, Lady R is not feeling well. Good night. I hope you feel better soon. Sleep tight. All right, Nathan asks, what day is the quiz? It's a pop quiz. You never know when it'll be. So you got to come to class. Hi, Jenna. All right. Okay. Steven is late. Steven, you can't be late. Because if this audio goes bad, I don't know how to fix it. That's your job. <laughs> uh, all right. Mickim says, hi, Kelly. I was watching in high speed. <laughs> I don't know how you can do that. How do I sound on five speed? High speed. Do I sound crazy? I bet I 
do. I mean, I sound like a chipmunk. I don't know how you can learn anything that way. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for sharing or sending a bill. And yes, you're right. The Aussie Dr. Black is killing me every week slowly. <laughs> Those Aussies, they're out to get us. I mean, poor Mark's foot. I mean, it might have been a bacteria or maybe he got bit by a platypus. Who can say? Who can say? He says, deep caves. You ladies looked so good tonight in your mermaid getup and your tiaras. I am pro tiara. I have a tiara that Stephen and Jenna bought me because it's important to have a tiara. And I thought you ladies looked really good. Maybe I should fancy up for my live stream, but like I didn't even shower after I did yoga. Like this is all you get. All right. Dee Dee says, can't give up Netflix, but an extra corner duty will pay for the Fish Fam Patreon. Yeah, I mean, I get that. But I'm just saying, like, if you were, like, thinking, oh, I don't know, I can't afford fishfam.link, I'd be like, well, you could get rid of Netflix. You could. Jenna says, can I support and have Netflix? The new season of You dropped today. I don't know that show. Is that a show I would like? I mean, if it's a reality show, the answer is no. That would not be for me. Is it a costume drama? I really like costume dramas. I mean, if people are wearing corsets and, like, repressing their feelings, that's my kind of TV. All right, Misfit. Hello. Hey, guys. Sitting in a hospital, so I'll message, oh, my God, when I'm not getting probed and prodded. Misfit, what's up? What's up? I hope you're okay. I hope you're okay. Please be okay. Let us know. All right. Dee Dee says, you can be the yoga princess on the fundamental stream. I mean, I could. I could. I mean, I could do yoga on the stream. I could teach you guys yoga. Okay, which would you rather have? I make you do yoga or I make you do a quiz on this? I don't know. I feel like that one could go either way. I think there'd be a lot of resistance to making you do yoga. Hmm. Okay, you is a you is a fictional show about a stalker. Okay, that's not for me. I do not like crime at all. I don't like murder. I don't want anyone to get hurt. I'm a tender heart. I do not want true crime. I do not false crime. Nobody getting shot. Nobody getting beheaded. Nobody getting violated. No. I just want people in corsets unable to talk about their feelings. That's what I want. Oh, Misfit had a nasty seizure at a client's home. Hit your head super hard. Oh, my gosh. So you have a concussion. Oh, no. Well, I hope you get the rest that you need. I hope you start feeling better. I'm glad you're at the hospital getting your brain checked out. Don't neglect that. It's important. And I'm so sorry. Ugh, that's that sucks. Geek Boy says yoga only if everyone needs to have their cameras on. It's <laughs> true. I mean, I've seen worse. I used to be a yoga teacher and, um, you know, I've seen a lot of dudes doing yoga who are beginners, a lot of women doing yoga at, who are beginners. And uh, I don't judge, you know, we're all at a certain point on our journey. All right. Yeah. And I made it to the bottom of the chat and like, it's only 840 people. I don't usually make it to the bottom of the chat. So you're going to have to ask me questions or I'm going to have to come up with something to talk about. So Mickham has a question for me. If you have an opinion or knowledge on the Rivulus killifish, oh, Cryptolebius marmalatus, it's a hermaphrodite. Okay, so the male is supposed to have no role in reproduction. Males occur only rarely. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's an exosystem. 
my guess is it's an XO system if males occur only rarely. So like um, with C. elegans, males are pretty rare. Um, the only time you get one um, is with something called non-disjunction, which is a mistaken meiosis. And you make a sperm that has no sex chromosome in it, but it has all the autosomes. And so you get one male. So um, you just get a, a lone male. And then if that male mates with the female, 50% of the, the offspring would be male. So you would get a balance of it in the population that way. But I don't know how it works. I don't know anything about this killifish. I wonder if Scotty knows anything. He's a killy person. I'm not a killy person. I'm a rainbow person. So most of these fish, all these fish right here that you see swimming, these are rainbows. All right. Annette is ready to be judged by me. I mean, I know that you would study. I know you would. You would work hard for it. You're a person who prepares for things. You would take it seriously. I think you would do well. And I would probably put a snail question on there. I know you've been you've been studying up on these streams. I mean, you were you were spitting your science knowledge on Steven's stream last night. So I think you would do well. So Dee Dee says. Kelly, it wouldn't matter either way for me. I never win the games with questions and I suck at yoga. Well, you suck at yoga now, Dee Dee, but like you give it a couple of years and you'd be good at it. And the thing is, is like the nice thing, the thing I love about yoga is nobody scores points. There's nobody who sucks at it. If you're breathing, you're good at yoga. So yeah, I mean, I've been doing it like 10 years and I don't know. I don't know that I'm a pro at yoga. I think you're a pro at yoga by your second class. So, yes, Scotty, do you know anything? <laughs> it's really, it's really confrontational, geek boy. But yes, yeah, Scotty, do you know anything about this killifish? If you kept this killifish, tell us about this fish. <laughs> So Scotty says, I've heard of them, but never kept them, but I want them. Well, that's not a surprise, Scotty, because you want all killifish. You have an insatiable hunger for killifish. There is no killifish that you don't want. So the only rivulets you have are cylindraceas. Okay. I don't know. I The only killifish I've ever had are golden wonder killies. And all I can say about those is they are very, very determined to become expensive dog treats. They are the jumpiest jumpers of any fish I've ever seen. And they just really, really want to die. So that is my sum total knowledge about Achilles. So Jenna, you've never watched that, but it sounds right up your alley. Well, Dee, you like more gruesome stories and stuff than I do, but I am a tender heart. I cannot deal with that. Okay, Nathan says, I kind of had a situation like that. Oh, gosh. So you were passed out on the floor and come to find out you have an extreme hypertension and said they found a blockage in one artery to your heart. Oh, my goodness. So did you have to get stented? Did they do balloon angioplasty on that? I ask because I'm writing a, I'm writing a document on uh, angioplasty right now. It's thrilling. Thrilling. It's It's so exciting. It's not. All right. Annette says, I'm talking about yoga judgment, not quiz. I think you'd be good at yoga. I think I would do yoga with you. We would have a good time. It would be nice. Bex does yoga. She would do it with us. Maybe at the class, I'll teach a yoga class. So by the way, I'm going to be a speaker at the Keystone class. Did you know that about me? I'm going to be a speaker there. I'm going to give two talks. So one of my talks is going to be about CO2 for beginners and the other it's going to be called CO2. You can do it. And my other one is going to be on glowfish genetics. So if you have ever had glowfish of any kind, please send me pictures, please email them to me. Um, because I've never kept them. <laughs> I mean, I know something about the genetics of them, but I, never actually kept them so but if you have i would love to see your pictures okay
Uh-oh, did Fat Kitty say clashy? Where is Fat Kitty? He's on the couch. I mean, I could just go get him. Maybe we'll get him in a little bit. Hmm. I mean, he won't like it. Hi, Clashy. I made you a mod, Clashy, so you can drop links because we want everybody to go to the Keystone Clash. I want to meet everyone. I want to hang out with all of you. I mean, you can hug me. I can hug you. If you're a hugger, if you're not a hugger, like, let me know. All right. Green Thumb Aquariums. Do you think that CEC ratings for aqua soils and other substrates are that important given that aquariums are closed systems that don't suffer from runoff like terrestrial environments? <sighs> yeah, I do think it gives you something. I think what it gives you is just a little bit of buffer, not in the pH sense, but I think it gives you a little bit of buffer to not have a perfect fertilization regime. So what cation exchanges? So cations are positively charged ions. So um, calcium, magnesium, iron, those are all cations. And cation exchange means that it can pull those out of the water column and bring them to the roots where they are. An inert substrate won't do that. Um, and I, I do actually think that those substrates do give you a little bit of an edge. Can you grow plants in an inert substrate? Sure. Um, I think it's a little harder. I think you have to be a little more perfect with your fertilization. So, yeah, I think so. I've used lots of different substrates. Um, I've used something called Soil Master Select, which is like a baseball field conditioner. I've used Turfus Pro League. It's another one of those baseball field uh, conditioners. Those have supposedly a high cation exchange capacity. The reason I won't use them again is they are messy as fuck. I mean, they are so light and gross to plant in and dusty, but I have used them. Um, I've used mineralized topsoil. I've used regular topsoil and I will also never use those again. Um, see what else have I used? I've used, um, black diamond blasting grit. That's an inert substrate. And it grows plants fine. I don't think it grows them as well. And then I've used aqua soils. I've used fluval stratum. I've used UNS contra soil. And I like those the best. I do think they're worth it. It's a lot of money. I get that. But I do think they're worth it. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people would agree. So there's a guy on a lot of the forums. His name is Greg Zydak. G-R-E-G-G. Zydeck with a Z. He goes by Greg Z on forums. And he is a master plant grower. And I've seen his tank with both black diamond blasting grit and with aqua soil. And they were beautiful both ways, but he concludes also that the the substrates do give you a little bit of edge. So that way you don't have to be quite so perfect. So but good question. So Mickham says, a friend in our Killy Club did some of the research on cichlids changing sex. His name is Olus Fenson. And he and the ones who you work with always want the, oh, what is that? Crypto Levius when available. Yeah, I would like to know more about that. I mean, like I said, I've never kept those fish before, so I've never researched them. Um, I don't, I don't know anything about sex determination and rainbows, but they don't do any changing of sex or anything odd like that, or there's no temperature controlling the sex or anything. I think they're probably just a straight chromosomal system. So I, I don't know a lot about those fish, but it is very interesting. So always more to learn. Jenna is a sensitive person, but she can watch and enjoy disturbing things. I can't, I can't. I just, uh, I just really want to watch TV that makes me laugh or watch costume dramas. That's really all I want. Stupid comedies and costume dramas. Johnny says one is a real talk. The other is a surprise yoga class. I mean, you don't know which is which. You got to go to both. It's, you know, you just, you don't know which I'm going to make you do, but you better bring your mat and comfy clothes to both. 
Johnny, are you going to the clash? Probably not, I'm assuming, because it's kind of a kind of a trip for you. Nathan says, no, I guess it wasn't to the point of needing work done, but I am on blood pressure meds now. I'm glad that you're on blood pressure meds. Make sure you take those because hypertension will shorten your life. It's a, it's a big problem. So Mickham says, I believe that Killy produce a meal every 5,000 fry or so. Oh my goodness. That, that particular Killy, not all Killies. Interesting. Well, um, I'll have to learn more about them, but I don't know about them. All right. Bunny says, please, yeah, we have a lifelong friend going in for surgery tomorrow that he's not expected to survive. He's having a stent in his heart and his kidney, his bad kidneys. He's had a liver transplant already. Well, we'll all keep them in, in our, in our thoughts, Bunny. So I hope he does well. Well, good night, Dragon Lair. I hope you continue on your road to recovery. All right, Jenna's talking about Dexter. That's another show I just can't watch. I can't. No murder. No crime. No lawyers. No cops. None. I'm done. No bad things. All right, Nathan says, I am taking it seriously now, but at the time I wasn't. I didn't care what they were saying. But now that it's been a while, I'm having some side effects. I'm taking it for real. Yeah, I'm glad you are. Health is important. And, you know, the older you get, the more serious you have to take your health. So. All right. Nathan has an angelfish question. Again, I am not an angelfish expert. Male versus female. Do males have a small hump-like forehead and females are more of a straight line from the tip of the mouth to start up dorsal fin? I don't know. The last time I had angelfish, I was five. And I don't, I don't know. But someone in chat can probably help you. But I'm not an angelfish person. All right. Yeah, that sounds like a sad deal bunny i hope they do well jenna asks what if dan needs a chaperone i mean dan seems like he could be a troublemaker johnny you might uh you might need to regulate johnny says it depends on where we're at business wise it'd be nice to be able to go yeah i mean because like you could uh you could run a table at the clash i mean i don't know if you'd want to sell fish but you could at least pass out information and stuff that might be nice I don't know, Johnny. I would love to meet you. It would be awesome. So Nancy says, yes, Nathan, adult males will get a bit of a nuchal hump. Okay, that's good to know. See, people in chat know more than I do about certain fish. Because I am not an angel fish keeper. You can't keep every fish. So Johnny says he thinks Fishtoberfest is much more likely for me. Well, you'll get to meet some good people at that. You'll get to meet Lady Rorschach and probably uh, Annette will be there because she's local. Um, Kenny E will be there. So you get to see good people there. I will not be at Fishtoberfest. Um, that's really far for me. That's really far. All right, but honey asks, anyone else see the giant happy dog face in the tank to the left of the screen in the plant shadows? I don't see it, but I'll take your word for it. I mean, there's a, there's a dog at my feet who's asleep. I'm not going to wake her up though. She's very tired. Oh, da -dum, da -dum. Okay. Bunny says, Nathan, sometimes they'll trick you. Something about the ovipositor on the females. More info out there. Keep asking around. Hmm. Don't know anything about angelfish. All right. Nathan says, I found out something you don't know anything about. There's a million things I don't know anything about. For instance, I don't know how cars work. I just don't know. And I also don't care, but I also don't know. Um, let's see what else. Do I, I'm not any good at physics. I'm terrible at it. Jake is really great at physics. I mean, he loves astronomy and he loves physics and he's so good at it. But I don't know. I'm not really very good at that. Let's see what else do I not know anything about. Art, I cannot draw. 
um, hmm, modern dance. Not a great dancer. Don't know much about it. Hmm. I mean, there's lots of things. There's lots of things. Don't know about killifish. Genesis physics is just calculus in real life. Yeah, I mean, I took calculus. I did okay at calculus. I think I got an A in it. But I don't know. I'm just not really great at physics. Just not great. I got C's in physics. I worked really hard. And I had to flirt with my lab partner nonstop. So I could pass that lab. And it worked. I'm not ashamed of it. I did what I had to do. All right. Sketty notices art is a skill anyone can draw. It's not a skill I have. Um, my ex-husband was an artist. and He was wonderful. He was wonderful at drawing. I don't know. I just don't really have aptitude for it. I mean, I'm somewhat musical. I play an instrument. I can sing. I'm not super great, but I can sing. Not a great dancer. Don't really have. Jake says I have one dance move not really that impressive so i don't know i'm really not athletic not at all not i don't know how i don't know any sports like i don't know any of the rules to football i don't know anything about it or mm, i guess i do know some of the rules to basketball and baseball but i don't know i don't know anything about hockey there's a lot of things so yeah Crib Keeper is insanely late this week. Holy cow, you are late, Tim. What if there was a quiz and you missed it? I mean, have you been studying? I don't know. So, chat topic. What should I talk about next week? So, we'll have a stream next week, but the week after, I am going to Costa Rica. So, there will be no stream then. So what should we talk about? I need some topic ideas. I'll give you some things that I've been thinking about talking about. So one thing I thought about talking about was how to read phylogenetic trees. So anytime you see um, like, like a family tree for like, let's say cichlids or rainbow fish, and you see like all those little connected lines and you think, well, what does that even mean? I thought about like, I could talk about that. Or like, let's see, what are my some of my other topics? I thought we could talk about, uh, that's my grocery list right there. That's not very helpful. Um, let's see. So I thought I could talk about um, photosynthesis. Maybe we do a two-parter on photosynthesis sometime. Because I think Geek Boy asked for that. So that's an option. Um, I thought we could talk about my very favorite thing to lecture about in the whole world is something called the lac operon. So the lac operon is, um, is gene regulation in bacteria. And it's like a really simple system of it. And it's my favorite thing to lecture on. So there's that. But like, I don't know, what kind of topics do you guys want? So, yeah. So let's see. You can't fail a quiz I didn't take right. Crib keeper, that's not how college works. Like, if you don't take it, you failed it. <laughs> so Sarah says, skills can be developed. True, there are hobby and crafts. And then art level. And then there's artists. Yes. I mean, I suppose if I actually, like, took took drawing classes and applied myself I would get better at it but I don't really have a real aptitude for it I don't really have a good eye for it Crip Keeper asks, can you talk about exotic pathogens you may encounter in Costa Rica well the last time I went there I got cryptosporidium and I was hospitalized for two weeks so let's hope that doesn't happen again <laughs> it's um it's a pretty clean country. It's pretty nice to travel in. I might have gotten cryptosporidium in the airport eating like a yucky salad or something. Like, why did I order a salad at an airport? I mean, come on. I should have just had a burger. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but no, it's a pretty clean country. It's pretty nice. You can drink the water. It's very clean. You can have ice in your drinks. Um, 
Yeah, it's just a really nice country to travel in. I always recommend it to people who have families, too, because it's so nice. I would much rather go there than Disney World. And it's probably the same price, the trip there, maybe even cheaper. Bunny Viper says, no stream. How dare you abandon us? What have we done? I mean, I need a vacation, guys. I mean, winter is long here in the Midwest, and I need uh, tropical sun. I need, I need it. I need it. I mean, you guys are great, but it's dark and, and cold and gray here. So, yeah, I need vacation. And Jake has been in Germany all week, so I didn't really see him last week weekend i won't see him next weekend so i miss him so i need a vacation so i can see him for a few days straight oh tim says don't listen to me my topics suck sometimes your topics are good the the gram negative gram positive topic i thought was pretty good i mean so you're batting 500 which i think for baseball is really good so there you go Alishan says, getting physics depends on the professor. Physics 1 professor had an accent, which is unintelligible over here. Physics 2 professor was a laid-back guy who went off on tangents. Both were not good. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, at larger universities, professors are promoted and get tenure based on their research, and there's very little incentive to do a good job at teaching. Um, you also don't get any training for how to teach. You kind of are just expected to know how to do it. Whereas like, for instance, Jenna has a master's degree in teaching. So she knows lots of teaching and education strategies. I never had any training on teaching at all. I mean, I went to college, so I kind of learned by example what I thought worked well and what didn't. But, you know, I never, never had any training on how to put together a lecture or how to write a quiz, or how to write an exam. So, and that's true of most professors. So it's kind of a broken system in a way. There are many things about academia that are not great. Partly why I don't work in it anymore. Mm -hmm. Nathan says, thanks to those I missed about my fish question. Yeah, I mean, that's what the chat is for. It doesn't matter if I don't know it. Somebody might. Rainbow fish and why they're all hybrids. So unfortunately, that's not really a science talk. That's um, that's more of a, um, a bad breeding practices talk. So um. Many people are working very hard to keep rainbow fish bloodlines pure. And the reason for that is rainbow fish hybrids look like trash. They tend to just look like big silver minnows. And that's not very attractive. Whereas like cichlid hybrids can look really cool. You can make cool looking cichlid hybrids. So the goal of being a rainbow fish keeper is to keep your line strong and healthy and pure. And not to cross it with others. Um... And unfortunately, there have been certain species that are hybrid that have just become hybrids. Um, they no longer look pure, um, and so that's been difficult. And it really has nothing to do with science, and really all to do about bad bad breeding practices. So let's say that you have you're breeding in outdoor ponds, and rainbow fish are kind of jumpy, skittish fish, and one one fish could jump to another pond, and that's how you could get hybridization happening or maybe you're sloppy and one your you know you your tank isn't covered so well and one job jumps from the top rack to a lower wrap rack or maybe your mop isn't so clean uh you know so it's really more about human foibles and not any scientific reason but if you are a rainbow fish keeper or you you know you think you want to dabble in breeding some rainbows um, reach out to me and I can give you sources of really good lines. Um, especially if there's a particular fish that you want, some of them are easier to find good lines of uh, than others. Um, and I can point you to good sources. I know all the breeders, but I don't breed fish. That is not a Kelly thing. I just don't. I know a lot of breeders though, and I like to support them. 
Nancy asks, how versed are you on the microorganisms in our tank? I find the microscopic stuff fascinating. I mean, I think that, you know, I know some, but I think that there's a lot that nobody knows. I mean, I don't know how well studied it is. Um, you know, we find things pop up in our tanks all the time. Like, like uh, I know that Foxanne found a scud or a or Brian actually found a scud. And where did it come from? Who even knows? And Bex found um, those really cool little freshwater jellies in her tank. And and someone else had sponges pop up in their tank. And it's like, where did they come from? You know, we don't we don't know. And so there's there's so much we don't know about the microfauna of our tanks or the bacteria because it isn't very well studied. Um, you know, we all learn about the nitrogen cycle, but it's so much more than that. Um, and, and our tanks, they, they go through a whole maturation process of a microbiome. And I don't think that's very well studied. So I don't know that I could help you because there's so much we don't know. Nathan asks why the earth is round. I mean, why not? That's how gravity, that's how gravity works on a body in space. Those objects tend to be round. I mean, flat would make no sense. And that's a physics question. And what did I say about physics questions? I said no. Kripke Russ, did you say you got crypto you were there at <laughs> Cryptosporidium? Sadly, it wouldn't have been great if I got a bunch of cryptocorins. I don't, they're not native to Costa Rica, though. The plants are very cool there, though. It's really, um, it's very cool when you're there because you're like, I know that house plant and that house plant and that house plant, and they're just growing everywhere. So I'll try to take a bunch of pictures and I'll post them on my Instagram. So you'll see. But um, oh, I'm pretty excited. It's a beautiful country. It has beautiful weather. Steven says, oh, why the earth might be flat. I mean... It's not. It's round. Yeah. I mean, or maybe maybe you might fall off. I don't know. Is Baton Rouge, Louisiana the end of the earth? I mean, I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe it is. Uh, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Okay, Sir so City asks, it would be cool to learn about the DNA sequencing and how that technology is yeah, that's a good idea. Is affecting species identification and hybridization. Yeah, you know what? When I do my uh, talk on how to read a phylogenetic tree, I will talk about DNA sequencing because that is a cool thing. And I will say that the coolest thing about it is like when I started doing science back when I was 19, it was a very long time ago, DNA sequencing was just in its infancy. So it was a very new thing, and it was a lot of work to sequence one little piece of DNA, one gene. It was a lot of work. And the only organisms that had full genome sequences, this was in like 1996, were E. coli. And I think in 1998, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is yeast. That's what I worked on. So that was it. And when I started grad school in... This was 2003. There was something called um, the 2010 Project. And that was that Arabidopsis thaliana would be fully sequenced by 2010. And Arabidopsis thaliana is a model system. It's a plant. And it's got the smallest genome of any plant. And that's why it's a popular model system. It's a very, very teeny, teeny, tiny genome. And so by 2010, it was the goal. Well, I think the human genome, which is a pretty big genome, was sequenced in like I don't know, 2006. I mean, it all just happened so much faster than everyone thought. And sequencing now is so cheap. You can sequence an average genome, I think, now for like $35. I mean, it's crazy how much cheaper and easier it is. And even like, so I finished grad school in 2010, 2010. And by then, it's like sequencing was so trivial. I mean, it just, things change so much and so fast. 
Oh, Bunny says, I'm thrilled for you. Enjoy your well-deserved vacation, both of you. Much love. We'll miss you. Have a blast. Make some memories. Well, thank you. I will. I really like to travel. I didn't get to travel much when I was young because I was poor and I was in school and I had no time and I had no money, but I'm trying to travel a lot more now. So it's been nice. It's getting notices. The sun shines almost constantly here. My house has passive heat gain from the sun. I turn up the heat and open the doors. You know, Iowa is much sunnier in the winter than Indiana. So in Northern Indiana, we have, um, because of the lake effect, we have a cloud bank that kind of rolls in in about November and it stays until March. Um, we do have some days that are sunny. Actually, this past week, we had several sunny days. It was quite nice. But in the month of January, I think we had like one sunny day, maybe two. And it's, it's tough. In December, I don't think we had any sunny days. So it's not great. So Mickham says importance or non-importance of getting wild genes into spawning groups of fish, animals, plants. Annual killifish live in small ponds for generations without new genetic input, from what I know. Yeah. Um, one thing that is true, though, is those populations are under selection. So the unhealthy individuals are culled by natural selection. So the strongest fish are surviving. Whereas um, in your tank, unless you're actively calling them, you're going to have weaker genotypes propagate. Um, and you do want to get more genes in your population because you can get a lot of inbreeding depression, which is where um, so a lot of bad genes are... Um, homozygous recessive. And if an individual is heterozygous, they'll be okay. They won't have anything bad with their health. But if they're homozygous recessive, they will have problems. So a famous example is in the United States, we have populations of Amish individuals that are now quite large, but they're founded from just a few individuals. So it's called the founder effect. And these populations have a lot of genetic abnormalities. They have dwarfism, they have other problems, and it's because they are very inbred. So getting those wild genes in your population prevents inbreeding depression. Okay, why is a peacock called a peacock? They have no similarities to either of those words in their names. So a lady is called a peahen. So a peacock was like a chicken. And I know you're trying to make a joke. And my mods will put you in timeout if you persist. Because my mods are vengeful. But there are peacocks and peahens. There you go. All right, how do plants get hybridized, GMO, and can we do it underwater in our aquariums? So um, there are natural hybrids and there are artificial hybrids and there are genetically modified organisms. And those are three separate things. So we'll start with GMOs. Those are things that start out in the lab and there is manipulation of the DNA that happens. You cannot do that in underwater in your aquarium. You need to have a lab to do that. Then there are hybrids, and you could do that in an aquarium. You can do that in nature. That's where two things are crossed, and it's easier to make hybrids in plants than it is in animals because there's no sex chromosomes. So plants can hybridize somewhat easily, and there's lots of natural things and artificial hybrids. So maybe. Um, the thing is, underwater in our aquariums, we're generally not doing sexual reproduction. So we're not like flowering plants and pollinating them and crossing them. It's a lot easier to do that immersed because we are not doing a lot of flowering underwater. So. All right. Johnny says, I would get freshwater sponges in my tanks in Kentucky. That's very cool. I have never personally seen these. I know Bentley Pasco has his famous Bob, but that's really cool. Yeah. If you have pictures of it, uh, put it on the Discord for us so we could see it. 
So pea fowl is what the hen is called, or a pea hen. That's collectively, they are pea fowl. All right, Nathan asks, I would like to learn at least a little about how our bodies react to different medications, whether they're natural or man-made. So there's a million different medications. Um, and your body's going to react differently depending on what they are and who you are. Um, and it doesn't matter if... Um, a compound is natural or man-made. A chemical is a chemical is a chemical is a chemical. It doesn't matter if you got it from your pristine organic essential oil or if it was created in a lab. Your body does not care. It is all the same. And you can have a bad reaction to um, a natural remedy or you can have a bad reaction to a drug. Um, I always remind people when they talk about how, oh, a natural remedy is better. Well, Socrates killed himself with hemlock. Okay, so Mickham says, I heard from a good source that multiple variants of chromosomes you just want through, um, through play an important role for fish not getting inbred like we often believe they do. Yeah, so that's just more heterozygosity. So more variants of the same gene, so more alleles in your population. Yeah, that's what you want. So they're the same chromosome, but they have different alleles on them. So the same gene, different alleles. It's kind of like different flavors of ice cream. Same dessert, different flavors. But yeah, you do want that. You want to prevent inbreeding depression as much as you can. I mean, there are a lot of natural animal populations that are very inbred, though, that are relatively healthy. So for instance, um, northern elephant seals went through a really big, it's called a bottleneck. So they were hunted almost to extinction. Only a couple individuals survived and now they have a pretty big population, but they are almost genetically identical. They have almost no variety between individuals. They're almost all the same and yet they seem to be pretty healthy. But if their environment changed, maybe they wouldn't have different genotypes needed to cope with that different environment. So that's the problem with it. So Matt says, I heard the earth was flat. You know what, Matt? I just put a big push in for people subscribing to fishfam.link. So you know what? Like, do me a solid and, you know, the earth is round. All right. Hi, Rabe. Hitting the like bu button. Catch the replay. Johnny says inbreeding in fish compared to mammals would be interesting. I don't really, th I think they're just as inbred. I mean, uh, there are lots of really inbred mammal populations. Um, cheetahs are very inbred. They went through a huge bottleneck. Um, you know, anything that is near extinction that's come back is going to be inbred. So bald eagles, when I was a kid, you never saw eagles. Um, so DDT is a, um, it's a, a weed killer. No, it's an insecticide. I think it's an insecticide that was banned shortly before I was born. I think it was banned in the early 70s. So um, what DDT does is it weakens the shells of bird eggs. And so eagles became very, very rare. And there were very few of them. And now they're, they're very common. Like you see bald eagles all over. Um, so yeah, they're really inbred. So I don't think there is a difference. I mean, an inbred population is an inbred population and anything that's near extinction or that's kept in inbred dogs can be very inbred. I mean, especially with a certain dog breed, if they're not bred responsibly, they can be very inbred. Um, yeah. Anytime you're mating siblings to one another, they're going to be very inbred. So Surf City says, funny how individual bodies are spherical, but groupings of bodies are planar. So galaxies. We would have to ask Jake about that. I don't really know anything about astronomy. That is not, that is not a Kelly area of expertise. We kind of have to keep it to biology and chemistry. Sketty Nora says, I have tiny limpet looking things. Oh my goodness. There are freshwater limpets. I can't figure out what they are. They say very small, half a grain of rice size. 
Are they bad for fish or shrimp? I'm guessing no. I'm guessing they're fine. I know there are freshwater limpets. I mean, that's pretty cool. I think they're probably okay. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think you're probably okay. I think it's cool. Bunny says, and inside the glowfish pick I sent you is a fish named Glowzilla. That's a really great name. It's a really, really great name. She would lay eggs and swim a loop to eat them before they hit the bottom. She was hungry. She had to eat all her babies. She is an ex- she's an exemplary fish. Very, very good looking fish. And she will be probably the cover of my talk. Mm, Sarah says, yes, winter is gloomy, but you get between 70 and 90 more days of spring fall. Yeah, it's true. And also it's not as like God forsakenly hot as it is in Iowa. I mean, that lake effect really moderates us. We are probably on average five to eight degrees warmer in the winter than at my parents' house. And we are five to eight degrees cooler in the summer. It's much, much more pleasant here. So Iowa, man, that climate is brutal. It is, the heat in the summer is just, it's like Mississippi. And the winters are like Minnesota. It's its tough times. Crib Keeper says, if we evolved from monkeys, why can't we cross breed with monkeys? Because we didn't evolve from monkeys. We share a common ancestor with monkeys. And that's a different distinction. And we have diverged significantly like since then. I mean, we share a common ancestor with the platypus also. And we cannot crossbreed with them because we have diverged sufficiently. So there is what's called reproductive isolation between the two populations. So we have different chromosomes, different sex chromosomes. We have different behaviors. Um... We come into season at different times. We have different territories. And we also have, for the most part, no desire to breed with monkeys. So our populations have diverged. So if you have a fork in the road, okay, our common ancestor would be the node here. One population's here, one population's there. So we did not evolve from monkeys. We share a common ancestor. It's kind of like you and your cousin have a common ancestor in your grandpa. You didn't evolve from your grandpa. You were related to the same person, you and your cousin are. Or you didn't evolve from your cousin, let's say say it like that. But you and your cousin share a common ancestor. All right, Mickham says, collect the sun injury energy and start a battery factory. I've heard it was pretty hot business branch these days. Iowa actually has tons and tons of wind power. Um, there's just windmills everywhere in Iowa. It's one of the top states in the United States for wind power. And, um, because it's very windy there. So Iowa is actually making lots of green energy and has for quite a while. Yeah. Just a plain windmill for the pond is thousands. Yeah. I would love for Jake's farm to get zoned for windmills. That would be great because he would make so much money. It's like $8,000 a month. You didn't know about female peacocks. I mean, there's, there's ladies too. They're, they're called peahens, peahens. So human calling or natural calling is a big factor when comparing wild and bred fish. Yeah. And good breeders do cull fish. So I have some rainbow fish in this tank that I got from a breeder who was not very good. And he sold me fish that were very tiny and they were too tiny to cull. And they are badly twisted. Um, I would never breed them. I don't know if they have bad genetics or if they were just got twisted for some other reason. But part of breeding is being, is culling. Which is one of the reasons why I don't breed okay i was not to suggest we try i was just curious why it was impossible she asked for topic ideas i don't remember what you asked but she just called the peas foul i love the peas they are good people i love them rob says golden pothos three feet of it in the aquarium there are six sections that have leaves growing now can it be propagated and how sure Maybe I'd let it grow a little more, but you can just snip the tip off of it. I've got some right there. 
just cut a little length of it and stick it in your tank and it will grow roots right from the stem. So don't have it like all the way under the water, but just stick the stem in the water and it'll grow roots. Just like easy. Needs a little bit of light, doesn't need a ton of light. Don't worry about anything else. Okay, Jenna asks, can Kelly explain the difference between serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, and oxytocin? That's a good topic. We could talk about brain neurochemistry. Yeah, we could talk about that. So those are neurotransmitters. Um, I, yeah, we could talk about that. It's a good topic. Good topic. I'll put it on the list. All right. You're back to your suggestions not being good. Jenna picks good topics. Jenna, in general, has good ideas. Nancy, my suggestions are almost always bad. I just usually don't commit to type them out. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, you know that gram negative, gram positive one. That was a that was a that was a good topic. It was a good topic. What main differences is making different species able to hybridize would be a more interesting thing. Yeah, because some things are easier to make hybrids of and they are plants. And I'll tell you right now, it all comes down to sex chromosomes um, because animals have different chromosomes, not in all of them, but like males have one chromosome and females have another. It makes making a hybrid really difficult, whereas in plants, it's really easy. So they do it all the time. All right. My, oh, Bunny says, my mother and her friend ran behind the city DDT spraying drugs as they drove down the road playing in the fog. I wonder how much that has contributed to so many of my generation's issues. Well, it would be your mother's generation's issues. Um, but that does bioaccumulate. I mean, I don't know how old you are, Bunny, but. If you were old enough when there was still DDT, I don't think you're quite that old, but uh, it's a very good thing that we quit using it. Sarah says, we didn't run behind them, but we're all outdoors and ran to watch. Yeah. You know, Jake grew up on a farm. He still lives on that farm. And I think about like all the farm chemicals that he has consumed in his life. It's not good. I mean, it's not good. Crypt Keeper asks, how are clones made? Is it good or bad to bring back extinct animals in your opinion? Hmm. And that's a good topic. Um, clones are made in different ways. And we could talk about some of the problems with them. I, I don't know. I mean, bringing back a woolly mammoth would be really cool. I guess I would really like us to focus more on preserving animals that are living right now rather than bringing back dead ones. But if something just became extinct like 10 years ago, oh, I don't know, bring it back, bring it back. Yeah. I really wonder about things like mental illness of seventies kids of which I'm one. I mean, I was born in the seventies also eh, a lot of chemicals, a lot of chemicals, not good, you know, and that's why GMOs are, not a bad thing because it means that we don't have to use as many pesticides or, or uh, herbicides. And that's, that's a good thing. It's a good trade-off. It's a trade-off I'll take. Don't encourage me. It's how, no, Tim, more bad ideas. We want more bad ideas because some of them are good ideas. Like that clone one that was a good idea. Suck some of the nucleus out of similar creature and insert the in extinct creature DNA, like the elephant egg with the woolly mammoth DNA. Yeah, I mean, that's how they would do it. There are problems associated with it, though. We could talk about that. So mainly, there are problems with the telomeres. Mm. Okay, Barbara says, how about fish TB and any new treatments? Hi, Kelly and everyone. Hi, Barbara. There is a really great article for that. If you join Rainbow Fish Live on Facebook um, in their, um, you know, under the group information on Facebook, it's kind of hard to find, but there's a tab of um, articles we have posted and there is the comprehensive fish tree TB um, article. 
And unfortunately, there are no good treatments for it. There, there are none. There's no antibiotics available that, that can treat it. It's a mycobacteria. So it's not exactly tuberculosis, but tuberculosis is a mycobacteria. And there are no good treatments. Rainbow fish are particularly susceptible to it. All right. Um, well, alas, it is 9.30. And we must go see Chattanooga Ed. Thank you, everyone. I am so grateful for all of you. Thank you, mods. Thank you, chatters. Thank you, lurkers. I love you, lurkers. Leave a comment. Um, and we will see you all next week. Everybody go to Chat Ned, Chattanooga Ed with hashtag Fat Kitty. See you all later. Bye.